Hello, this is GeoTechLand. Let's take a look at what is new in the world of tech. Gab blames reported hack of 40 million posts on demon hackers. A hacker was able to siphon some 70 gigabytes worth of data, including private posts. The CEO of Gab said that his own account and one for former President Trump were among those compromised. Although it's been reported that Trump's account wasn't actually affiliated with the former president, the account itself was actually an email address that belonged to the Gab CEO himself. Although personally, I don't like Gab and I probably wouldn't really agree with a lot on a lot of the users that use Gab. I do try to be fair and the hack itself, if it's a lot of regular people that whose private information was leaked, then yeah, I'm, I'm totally not okay with that and I think that's bad. But my issue with Gab is that they position themselves as a free speech alternative, but it seems more like they're a safe haven for a particular ideology. You know, people that support Trump, that are on the far right. And if they truly meant to create a free speech alternative, then as an example, for every five popular conservatives that are on their platform, they should be reaching out to you know people on the left or liberals to join the platform as well and keep things balanced. A good example of this is the team creating LBRY, even though it's pretty clear that they have their own biases, they do a much better job in reaching out to a diverse set of content creators with very different political views, and it creates a more balanced experience. Speaking of Trump though, YouTube will lift Trump's suspension when the risk of violence has decreased. When Trump was banned across many different social media accounts like Twitter and Facebook, YouTube had said that they were only banning him temporarily. And it looks like the CEO of YouTube has stated that the channel remains suspended due to the risk of incitement to violence. And given the warnings by the Capitol Police yesterday about a potential attack today, I think it's pretty clear that the elevated violence risk still remains. Which is interesting because I honestly thought that they had banned him permanently, you know, in the same way they did Alex Jones. But I'm actually surprised that they're considering uh, bringing him back on. I mean, he's a very popular figure and would obviously generate a lot of traffic. So, and also, I guess, as a reach out to conservatives that are probably not happy with the site after they banned Trump. So he's going to be held to the same standards as other channels are held to, you know, given second or third strikes and things like that. As for my thoughts when it comes to whether Trump should be banned off of social media, I covered this in a different video, which I'll link in the description below. But in general, I think there could be an argument to be made for banning Trump that's very sound when it comes to indirectly instigating violence, not just from the speech he gave prior to the riots, but just in general throughout his campaign. But, but I still would rather that decision be more democratized and off the hands of government and private corporations. It should be instead independent nonprofits or community funded organizations and that's why in general i prefer non-commercial social media like mastodon and peertube ubuntu makes flutter default choice for future desktop apps google's open source and cross-platform ui making framework has continued to grow in popularity especially among web developers who are looking for an easy way to sort of create one app that works well on desktop and on mobile flutter uses the dart programming language and their desktop SDK has just been released as a stable release. Canonical has been a vocal supporter of Flutter. It's worked with Google in the past to bring the Flutter SDK to Linux desktops via the Snap Store and plans to create a new Ubuntu installer using the technology. There's good and bad arguments for this development. On the one hand, you know, this makes it easy to create apps that work across different platforms. And let's say it did become the standard, it would allow other programs that typically are only exclusive to Windows and Mac to be easily available on Linux. On the other hand, a lot of people would prefer having native desktop apps rather than something that's like web based. I think in general this is good, but we should always, you know, be cautious and I guess my concern is just being dependent on this framework and then in terms of how much does Google have an influence in this and you know, what are the potential ramifications of that. And this next story of the Google free Android OS is a reason why I think it could be a good thing. 
as Google Free EOS is now selling preloaded phones in the US starting at $380. The E Foundation, which makes the EOS, which is an open source, pro privacy, and fully de Googled fork of Android, is coming to Canada and the USA. It's always been available for you to download and install on your phone but they're now officially going to be selling it directly to US and Canadian customers. The only two phones though that they're selling are refurbished Galaxy S9 for $380 and the Galaxy S9 Plus for $430. This is a very good thing just to see more phones available in the US that are de-googled Android. Very happily welcome this news. I do wish other phone makers like the Fairphone for example would also come to the US. And I feel like eventually they will, but it'd be nice if they were already here. If you're enjoying my content, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, PeerTube, and follow me on Odyssey. You can also support me on LiberaPay, Patreon, and by shopping at Earth Hero. See links in the description below. Facebook lifts the ban on US political advertising. Facebook will lift the ban on political advertising imposed after the U.S. election to curb the spread of misinformation. It has pledged to investigate whether its political ad systems need a further overhaul. They've received feedback about its ad system, including its inability to distinguish between ads from politicians and political groups and social issue ads from advocacy groups, as an example. I don't really like political ads because I feel like it's always just going to favor people that have more money than others anyways and give them an unfair advantage it's just another way for really wealthy people to spread their own ideology so in general while i don't like it i think it's a good thing that facebook will reevaluate the system and maybe make it more fair but i wouldn't trust them amd has announced the rx 6700 xt gpu which launches in march 18 for 479 dollars it's being positioned as a 1440p card which a lot of people found the pricing to be more than expected and i guess this is due to the, the cryptocurrency mining craze that's still in full effect if you've been looking to buy a gpu for the past few months you'll be sure to find that everything's been out of stock I'm thankful that I got lucky that when I bought my GPU, it was a 5600 XT and it was at a reasonable price. And that was before this, this crypto craze that we're seeing. Last year's new RDNA 2 cards didn't necessarily live up to AMD's claims that they had released a killer 4K lineup. Based on what I'm reading, it looks like these GPUs won't be competitive with the newer NVIDIA GPU lineup. We'll see how good they are if we can actually find them in stock. Linux 5.12 release candidate 2 was released early due to a nasty corruption issue. The nasty file system corruption was stemming from botched swap file handling and it was causing data to be corrupted. So it's just good to keep in mind that while the Linux foundation does a good job of creating these kernels for us, sometimes there could be a nasty bug here. And it's just a good reminder to be cautious and, and careful when you're upgrading to a new kernel, especially if you're all about that bleeding edge life here. Valve has ended development on Artifact. It's been a year's worth of work on rebooting this virtual trading card game. It was originally launched in 2018, designed by famed Magic the Gathering creator Richard Garfield. You know, a lot of people had their issues with this game. Many considered it an unfinished project. Many considered it a game mostly relying on micropayments. So overall, it just didn't have a good reputation. I never played this game in particular, but I remember when this game was released and I was kind of cheering on Valve because they have a good reputation when it comes to open source, you know, with them making gaming on Linux more viable through Steam's Proton. And I felt that, well, if Valve makes a compelling game, that's good for Linux because then we have one more AAA game that is available natively on Linux. Guess they can't all be winners here. You have reached the end of this episode. If you like this content, tune in next week for some more awesome tech news.